Welcome back again to Diddy Reviews. Today I've got another cooler to look at, and again this is another cooler from Ericool. So a massive thank you to Ericool again for sending some sending the product out to me. I really do appreciate it, and it's fantastic to see some more amazing products from Ericool. Um, now I've got really high hopes for this one because on the packaging and on the face of it, it looks absolutely brilliant. This is the Mirage L120, uh, 120 mil AIO from Ericool with a copper cold block and also a aluminium radiator um, obviously I'll unbox it and show you what you get in the package and I'll show you what comes with it and a few uh, little details about it uh, and then we'll get it in the system and we'll run some tests and I'll show you how well it performs um, so like I say it's from Ericool this is from part of their Mirage uh, sort of line and they do cases as well um, which has got like an infinity mirror on the fans as well as on the pump as well um, so I'm, like I say I'm hoping this is going to look absolutely amazing because from the pictures it does look brilliant uh, now this is, like I say, uh, the L120, so this is 120mm uh, size, and I'm going to be using this on a 5900X. Now normally, I wouldn't recommend you use a 120 on something like this, on a CPU this high powered, um, because generally it's, you're better off with at least a 240 because of the amount of heat these generate. But nevertheless, it still gives me an opportunity to test it and see how well it can perform. And hopefully it will do an absolutely fantastic job. Uh, like I said, I won't expect too much from it because it's on a 5900X, but if you can see that it comes out with, with some okay results here, then you know on your lo lower end CPUs, which I would recommend it for, something like an i5 or maybe a 5600X or 3600X, that type of thing, then you'll know that it will perform really well on that. Um, so let's get into the unboxing, uh, show you what's in the package, get it in the system, and we'll give you some testings, and I'll see you on the other side. <laughs>
so that's the Mirage L120 from Aerocool and 120mm AIO from Aerocool, like I say. Um, now, like I said in the beginning, I don't expect a lot from it in terms of cooling on a 5900X, which is uh, stuck at 4.6 all core, so it's going to run really hot. And a 120, I wouldn't normally recommend for a processor like this. However, if we look at the results in terms of the testing, then I'm actually quite surprised on how well it performed. And I would say that the 240 or 360 is going to perform obviously even better. And I would definitely recommend it for this type of CPU. But as a 120 on this CPU, obviously these results aren't going to be fantastic. But for a 120, I'm actually quite surprised at them and actually think they're, they're pretty good. So I ran three tests, only three just to, because it doesn't take a lot to test the temperature sort of on this kind of cooler. So I ran a Cinebench test uh, for 10 minutes and I came out with an average of 75 degrees and a maximum of 78. So yeah, it got pretty warm, um, obviously warmer than the 240 would, um, but it didn't throttle or anything like that. No problems whatsoever with that. It was very stable, not not a problem at all, and it's it's happy to run at that sort of temperatures. So um, for this kind of cooler, like I say, a 120, not a problem at all. Um, again, I wouldn't recommend it for this, but still, it's, it performs really, really well. Now, second one, I rendered a 4K video using Magix Vegas, um, just to give you a sort of more real-world scenarios to how it would perform in a normal task that people might use this sort of CPU for, I suppose. And we've got an average of 73 and a max of 77. So again, not the best results in the world, but for a 120, they're definitely good. And again, like I say, from there, I could happily recommend the 240 or the 360. Uh, and then the last one, just because of that's, this is what I like to do on my channel, I uh, tested a, te uh, a benchmark of Shadow with the Tomb Raider just to see what it would sort of run like because people might, most people might be using this for a gaming PC. So to see how sort of hot it would get during gaming, um, I used Shadow of the Tomb Raider uh, built-in benchmark and I got an average of 55 and a maximum of 64. So not a problem at all there. If you're using your system for gaming and you want this uh, AIO, then it's going to perform pretty well, to be fair. Um, like I say, I would more recommend this for something like a 5600X or a 10600K, that kind of thing, um, because it's not really suited for this. But like I say, it did pretty well anyway. Um, so if you were going, if, if you did have like a higher end Ryzen, a higher end Intel, then I would recommend 240 at least. Um, now, in terms of looks, I think you can probably agree with me. If you're into RGB, obviously, um, then from the looks of it, it looks absolutely brilliant. Um, the Infinity Mirror that's on it looks awesome. Uh, I know there is other companies probably doing it at the moment, but this is something um, quite quite sort of new in the RGB sort of market, and it looks absolutely brilliant. Um, I can't fault it at all. It looks really, really good. Um, now, let's talk about things I didn't like. Um, right, installation, not a problem at all, really easy. Uh, if you've got an AMD board, it uses the built-in AMD brackets, so make sure you've still got those to hand. Please don't throw them away. And Intel is pretty much the same as any other cooler in terms of installation. Uh, obviously, you get the bracket and everything with it. Um, now, the only thing I didn't like about the installation is on my motherboard in particular, and it might be the same for some of us, um, it depends on your motherboard, I, I, I would think. Um, the screw that you screw down like the little bracket um, which I'll put up on the screen now um, really interferes with the VRM cooling on the motherboard and actually butts into it so if you're not careful you are actually probably going to damage your VRM cooling at the top so be careful with that if you're buying this uh, like I say you might be okay on some motherboards mine's got quite a chunky sort of heat sink on the VRM at the top so that's probably why it interferes um, but that's something Aero School should probably have a look into whether they can make the bracket a little bit more sort of low profile um, so it doesn't interfere as much. Um, other than that, not really anything else to talk about, to be honest with you. Um, I'm nitpicking a little bit now. So the fan on the one I've got, when it's at slow speeds, it looks like it's wobbly. I don't know whether it's the hub in the middle, like the sort of infinity mirror is not quite central, or whether it's the actual fan itself wobbling. Um, but when it gets up to speed, it's it's not a problem at all. Um, and then the last one, with this is, this is common for most AIOs now, especially RGB ones. Um, there's so many cables. Um, obviously, you've got a cable for the fan. You've got three cables coming off the pump. Um, one for like the SATA one, the one for the RGB, and the one for the pump uh, speed control. So, yeah, there's just loads of <laughs> loads and loads of uh, cables coming off it. I think what they should do, and this is goes out to all manufacturers of AIOs, is sleeve them in with the tubing and let make them come out at the radiator end. 
just to make it easier to, to tidy them away. It'd make it so much easier. And I know there is someone out there that does that. I'm not sure which one it is. I can't remember at the moment. Um, if you have, if you know which one it is, and please leave it in the comments and let me know. Um, but yeah, just just sleeve them in, in with the in with the tubes. Sleeve them all in, and then it's, there's no problems with with cable clutter because there is on all RGB um, AIOs. There's so much cable, and it's just ridiculous to be honest with you. <laughs> um, but like I say, it's not a fault of Oracle. Everyone does it. They're all pretty much the same in terms of that respect. Um, noise. It's pretty much silent to be honest with you. Uh, I don't have anything to really test it properly, and the fans in my computer are quite loud, so it kind of you can hear them over it anyway. So it wouldn't be sort of a fair test. Um, so, but from normal day to day running as it is at the moment, just sitting there idling along, um, yeah, not a problem at all. Uh, really, really quiet, and I couldn't hear it over my other fans. But like I say, my other fans get really loud because I've got quite a lot in here. Um, so that's about it really. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it gives you an insight into what this call is like and whether you want to buy it or not. Um, I do recommend it, uh, especially the 120 for your lower end CPUs. But like, like I said before, if you're going for a higher end CPU, 5900x 5950, then at least go for a 240 um, and you'll be, uh, you'll be happy with that. And um, uh, last but not least, pricing. This goes from around 60 to 70 pounds for the ML120 and I'll put the prices for the 240 and the 360 up on the screen as well so you can see the price difference is not a big jump in terms of price so um, personally I would go for the higher ones anyway if you can fit it in your case obviously if you can't then the 120 is there uh, and that's it guys uh, thanks for watching uh, I hope to see you on the next video please don't forget to like subscribe and leave any comments you have in the comment section below it all really helps me out and I'll see you on the next video thank you